Have you ever wondered what happens if you fall into quicksand? Quicksand, the slow-moving natural trap that has ensnared the imagination of many through countless movies and adventure novels, is more than just a dramatic plot device. It's a real phenomenon occurring in nature, often found near rivers, beaches and marshes across the globe. The very word quicksand evokes a sense of intrigue and danger, conjuring images of explorers and adventurers struggling to escape its clutches. This seemingly mystical substance is not the solid ground it appears to be, nor is it the watery abyss it seems to become once disturbed. Instead, quicksand is a mixture of fine sand, clay and water, creating a spongy and unstable soil that can unexpectedly ensnare anything that ventures too carelessly into it. Despite its menacing reputation, quicksand is not the insurmountable death trap often portrayed in fiction. So what exactly is quicksand and how does it form? Let's dive in. Quicksand may seem like ordinary sand, but it's far from it. Often depicted in films as a deadly trap swallowing its victims whole, quicksand in reality isn't quite the monstrous killer. But what exactly is this mysterious substance? At its core, quicksand is a hydrogel consisting of fine sand, clay and salt water. This combination results in a saturated loose sand that when undisturbed might appear solid but is actually a precarious trap. The science behind quicksand is quite fascinating. It's a colloidal mixture where the sand is so finely dispersed within the water that it forms a thick, soupy concoction. Quicksand forms in places where water saturates an area of loose sand, usually near riverbanks, beaches or beneath underground springs. The key factor here is water. Without it, the sand particles can't float and create this unique phenomenon. When water in the quicksand cannot escape, it creates a liquefied soil that cannot support weight. This means anything heavy that enters the quicksand, like a person or animal, will start to sink if they disturb this balance. Imagine stepping onto what looks like firm, wet sand, only to find it liquefying under your feet. As you step, you apply pressure, and this pressure forces the water between the sand particles apart, making the sand unable to support your weight. Once disturbed, the structure collapses and the sand begins to behave more like a liquid. Interestingly, quicksand is not the same everywhere. Its consistency can vary depending on the local conditions. For instance, quicksand near a sea might be saltier and have different buoyancy characteristics compared to that found near a freshwater source. Despite its intimidating behavior, understanding quicksand is crucial, especially for those who adventure into the wild or unknown terrains it's the knowledge of its formation and characteristics that can make the difference in safely navigating these deceptive terrains. Now that we know what quicksand is, the next question is, why is it so dangerous? Quicksand doesn't swallow people whole, but it's still dangerous. Let's dispel a popular myth right off the bat. No, quicksand won't suck you down to an underground cavern or an abyss. However, the real peril of quicksand doesn't lie in being swallowed up, but in the deceptive grip it has. Quicksand is essentially a soupy mixture of sand and water that forms a semi-liquid trap. When disturbed, the water and sand mixture turns from solid to a more fluid state, making it difficult to maintain balance and easy to sink. The more one struggles, the faster they sink. If you've ever stepped in it, you know the initial feeling of shock as your foot suddenly drops. The true danger of quicksand is the suction effect it creates. As the sand compacts around you, each movement you make can force the sand to become tighter and more constrictive. This suction is powerful, and breaking free without knowledge of the proper technique can be exhausting, or worse, nearly impossible. Imagine being stuck standing, or worse, lying in cold, wet sand for hours. The psychological terror alone is daunting, not to mention the physical strain and the risk of hypothermia. Furthermore, being trapped in quicksand can leave you vulnerable to other dangers, such as rising tides or predators in wilder areas. The risk increases if you're alone with no one to assist or even call for help. Escaping quicksand might not be as dramatic as movies suggest, but it requires knowledge and calm. Imagine you're walking and suddenly you start sinking into the ground. It's an unsettling feeling and your first instinct might be to panic. But let's explore how to stay safe if you find yourself in this sticky situation. Quicksand isn't quite the bottomless pit depicted in movies, but it is a natural trap that can be dangerous if not approached correctly. The key to surviving quicksand is understanding how it behaves and using that knowledge to your advantage. 
First and foremost, remain calm. Panic increases your chances of sinking deeper because frantic movements can force more water from the sand, making it even less stable. Take deep breaths and try to keep your head clear. As you feel yourself starting to sink, resist the urge to struggle violently. Instead, lay back slowly onto the quicksand. This might seem counterintuitive, but the goal is to increase your body surface area. By lying flat, you distribute your weight over a larger area, which helps prevent further sinking. Once you're lying back, the next step is to free your legs. Quicksand usually traps people by suctioning around the legs, so it's crucial to address this first. Avoid jerking your legs, as this can create a vacuum effect under them, making it harder to pull them out. Instead, move slowly. Gently wiggle your legs to introduce water back into the sand around them, which reduces the density and helps your legs to float up. While you're working on freeing your legs, use your hands to paddle slowly and steadily on the surface to help you inch backwards towards solid ground. This movement should be smooth and measured. Think of swimming gently in a pool, not splashing around. If you have a companion or if you can reach a solid object like a branch or a rope, use it. Hold on to it as you continue to move horizontally, not vertically. Pulling yourself up directly can cause you to sink deeper, so focus on moving back towards the edge of the quicksand. Patience is your best ally in this situation. It can take several minutes to extricate yourself from quicksand, so maintain your calm and keep your movements deliberate and controlled. Remember, quicksand is not as deep as it is wide, and there's usually firmer ground close by. Once you manage to get back on solid ground, don't stand up right away. Crawl or roll away from the quicksand area to avoid redistributing your weight and sinking again. Once you're at a safe distance, you can stand and move away from the area. Surviving quicksand is about smart, calm reactions. The more you know, the better you can protect yourself in these rare but perilous situations. While knowing how to escape is crucial, avoiding quicksand is even better. Awareness is your best tool in avoiding quicksand. Quicksand doesn't appear just anywhere. It's typically found near bodies of water such as rivers, lakes and beaches. It can also form in marshes or areas that have recently experienced heavy rainfall. Recognizing these environments is your first step in steering clear of potential hazards. When exploring unfamiliar territories, it's crucial to keep an eye out for signs that might indicate the presence of quicksand. One major indicator is the appearance of the ground. Waterlogged sand might look solid but can quickly become unstable under pressure. If the sand appears unusually shiny or jiggly, it's wise to test the ground with a stick before proceeding. Additionally, vegetation, or the lack of it, can also provide clues. Areas with sparse grass or plants might be undergoing constant water saturation, which can lead to the formation of quicksand. Conversely, areas thick with vegetation are less likely to harbour this deceptive hazard. Taking precautionary measures can further minimise risks. When walking in suspect areas, distribute your weight by lying flat or crawling instead of walking. This method can prevent sinking if you accidentally step onto quicksand. Moreover, always carry a walking stick. It's not just an aid for stability, it can be used to test the firmness of the ground ahead of you. As a rule of thumb, stick to mark trails and avoid wandering off into uncharted areas, especially after a storm or near waterways. Stay aware and you can enjoy your adventures without unwanted surprises. Today we've uncovered the truths and tackled the myths surrounding quicksand. Let's quickly revisit the intriguing yet perilous world of quicksand. Initially we explored what quicksand actually is, a mixture of sand and water that behaves like a liquid when disturbed. Its formation is quite fascinating, typically occurring near riverbanks, beaches or marshes where water saturates loose sand. We then delved into the dangers associated with quicksand. Despite popular belief, it's not the swallowing sands of movies, but it can pose real threats if one panics or fails to react properly. Understanding these risks is crucial. Next, we discussed survival strategies. The key takeaway? Don't flail, stay calm. Distributing your weight evenly by lying back can prevent further sinking, and slow, deliberate movements can help you escape. We also covered how to avoid quicksand altogether by recognizing potential quicksand areas and being cautious around them. 
Remember, the world is full of wonders and dangers alike, and knowledge is your best defense. Stay curious, stay safe.